9,500 pounds, pretty much on the nose. A four slide, little bit smaller kind of concept, middle bunkhouse Arctic Wolf coming in on trade here at Halet RV of Goldwater, Michigan. Uh, Look to be something like a, uh, you know, grandparent owned, and uh, they like to bring the grandkids along. But now they got a golf cart. So they swapped it out. They liked what they saw of this family, uh, the Cherokee group. They swapped it into a Wolf Pack fifth wheel toy hauler so they could bring the golf cart and the grandkids instead of, you know, huh, only one or the other. She's got a couple little bumps, blemishes. I'm going to shoot you straight. I'm going to point those out as we go. But overall, guys, you're going to be saving a mint off brand new. Uh, auto leveling, second air, pivoting pin box for short beds. It's got a lot of good stuff going on. Now overall this one looks pretty good. It's, it's late model, so it's not like it's had a lot of time to get banged around too much. There's a few little blemishes that you'll see as you go through, but I don't think anything too concerning. It looks like maybe the sink cover might have popped off. I'm, I'm going to guess probably jiggled off in transit at some point, and it got cracked a little there on the side. But that's like the worst I've been able to come up with on it. Uh, overall, looks pretty good. So if what you're looking for, you want yourself a nice family moving fifth wheel, like uh, this is perfect for like a three quarter ton truck, something like that, by the way. Probably a little more than a half ton wants to be towing. Uh, I know there's some people who really like to advertise these as half ton towable. I think that's a little irresponsible. But I think if you're on a, a solid three quarter ton and above, this would be a great family mover all day, every day. That is a sleeper sofa in the back, by the way, trifold. And that's one of the cool things about a middle bunk room like this with a loft, is it gives you the ability to have four separate sleeping areas, which is a hard thing for a lot of RVs. It gives you a lot of individual... Interesting, sorry. I just saw, I just kind of registered in the fact that's a three blade ceiling fan. That is, it's uncommon. I mean, it, 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 like they're almost always four blades. I don't know why that really jumped out at me right now. It, it, it did. So this has that sort of worked wood kind of uh, feeling on the top, that kind of distressing right there. That's something eagles do quite a bit of. Um, the uh, it, it does have a little bit of a surface abrasion to it on a couple of spots. I think some people might call that character. Some people might call that, a, you know, a scuff or whatever. Whatever you call it, I don't care. I'm only going to do my job of making sure you are made aware of it. Because if I see something, I say something. I don't hide things here at Halitz. The uh, TV would be mounted on this wall here. This RV would not have had a TV from the factory. But, man, you could put yourself one heck of a jumbotron there. And there is, like, a virtual, like, epic walk-in pantry behind that. We'll get that cracked open in just a second. Electric heat and fireplace down there to take the nip out of the air without burning up all your propane. And uh, in our kitchen space here, it's an interesting kitchen setup. They had to get a little creative with it. But it's effective. It works well. Now that, by the way, that is a residential refrigerator. That is 110 only. The RV does have an inverter built into it to keep that operating while in transit. And let's, uh, I tell you what, I think this is a good time to keep some of this cracked open so we can see, uh, not keep some, get some of it cracked open so we can see the storage in here. First of all, we got our plywood drawers, and I really like how this top one is segmented for things like your uh, your utensils, you know? Next, we open these doors here, and you can see a nice spot for a wastebasket right below the sink, which is always handy. And that is a larger farm sink, by the way, so your bigger pots and pans can actually fit into there. A little pocket next to the microwave, nothing gone to waste. And then I, I think this is probably, I think, where I would keep things like plates and, uh, you know, cups and my frequently used camping dishes. That being said, I typically mostly camp with the Chinette variety of disposable uh, plates and cutlery. <laughs> and this is what I was talking about. This is huge. Like, if I just open the store, like, okay, yeah, I get it. It's a pantry. But it goes all the way to this deep slide exterior sidewall and even kind of curls in behind the entertainment center. I don't even know if this is really doing it justice on video, but I know that I see campers all day, every day, and I get very numb to stuff. I see them all the time. And that actually kind of caught me off guard. I was like, whoa, like that really jumped out at me as something that I, I thought was, you know, that was special. They, they did some really good things right there. 300 pound rated flip down bunk. The sofa can fold into an extra sleeper and you see triple dresser drawerage storage right down there below. And this is kind of cool because this could be like you have a more compact living room. The idea behind this one is to try to get you a middle bunk room that isn't 13,000 pounds. 
and at whatever it was, 9,600, I, I think. I can't remember. I've seen, I've had like six trailers come in a day, and it's starting to get blurry. Um, whatever it is, they, they did a good job of keeping that down, but this can actually act as almost like a second living room, or in a way, I suppose this could be more of a primary living room. If you wanted to use this RV as something where like this is the living room, and back here, we have a more kind of grand open kitchen. There's no one way you ever have to use an RV. You can use things, I guess, you know, however it suits you, folks. Shifting gears real quick here. Up in the hallway, we have our little access ladder to that loft. That could be sleeper. That could be storage. It could be an attic. It could, you know, be a little bit of whatever you want. I do like, though, that if you are sleeping up there, it is all fully enclosed at the really, like, tall part that's way off the ground, so you're not... Uh, risking like falling down and you know busting your face or anything like that spinning us around a little bit here This does have a dual entry bedroom and bathroom uh, If we take a look over here You can see they've got the sink kind of in the middle section here Which is something I like because it usually allows them to either give you a bigger sink like you see here or sometimes a little bit Additional counter space. We've got room to actually stand in here and put on a pair of pants And there's a closet slide that goes between the bedroom and bathroom That's going to give us some nice linen space right there plus we have ourselves about a six and a half foot tall shower where somebody like me can actually stand and bathe without needing to duck my head the whole time. Flipping around the other direction, we also have ourselves one of those extra large vent fans up here, and those things push some serious air. That is a high velocity, high output vent fan with plenty of legroom in front of that porcelain foot flush stool. Again, very handy for taller people like me, but frankly, I've never seen anyone complain about having more room around the toilet. I've certainly seen people complain about having not enough. So you won't have that issue here. This generation of Arctic Wolf also had a rather uncommon thing. It had a power up down bed system. You see that switch above the bed right there. If you want to, it'll like raise the headboard and kind of suck the feet of the, uh, the bed in place. And what that's going to do is during the day, give you some more walk around space like this. But like if it's a rainy day, if you wanted, you could install a TV on the wall here, which it looks like the previous owner had done at some point. But you could put yourself a TV on the wall right there. You could keep that bathroom door closed and you could have yet another private entertainment zone. So despite the fact that this is a smaller mid bunk, they've kept like the individual personal function space big and open. It's, it's, it's different, but it works. It works well. Both side stands, by the way, do have some household and USB outlets uh, on them. Let me get up here past the uh, shadows a little bit so you can see that. So very CPAP friendly. And once again, what you're not seeing is closet space so far. That is going to be all located here in the slide out. You've got that double door mirrored closet and four individual dresser drawers to keep your personal items, uh, you know, from bouncing around the floor and being exposed to the public. Although I don't know is anyone really giving a, like a public tour of their RV bedroom? I, I don't think so. J just me, I guess. In a way, yes, I am. <laughs> now, this is made in a slightly previous generation compared to the Arctic Wolves you'd see at Halet RV brand new today. Uh, good giveaway. That is no window in the main entry door like the newer ones have, but that is still anti-slam. You see the bigger handle and the stable steps for a nice kind of sturdy come and go. And that will uh, you know, really help keep the RV from getting jostled around. We have ourselves uh, a couple things here. Like, it's obvious that we have a little outdoor fridge, so you don't got to go in and out for drinks all day. But I like this little corner pocket. And uh, over here, a couple extra sets of outlets. Very handy if you want to have uh, little things powered up and rolling over here on the campsite of the RV. Not to mention, over by the TV hookups, you have more outlets and those uh, little speakers there, or right in between those speakers there. Um, it's a smaller fifth wheel with a more compressed upper deck, but they did a good job of giving us some pretty decent pass-through storage capacity in here, as you can see. Uh, that wide open area there, I've seen some people put up some cargo netting just to make sure their cargo doesn't jostle around or fall down. And that right there is the inverter for that residential refrigerator. If you're going to be off-grid or in transit, that will allow that uh, smaller residential refrigerator to keep operating so that you don't have you know spoiled eggs when you reach your destination, poisoning your family, because that's obviously not what you're looking for. I will say though, if you're boondocking, that uh, inverter, it will absolutely munch the batteries. They they will not last long unless you take some uh, extra precautions there. My recommendation would be getting something like a uh, small generator. Now that is a Moride Orbital Pivoting Pin Box. And what that can do is, uh, if you are on a, a shorter bed pickup, the, the pin box doesn't always have to pivot. It just has the ability to do so. So that, uh, you know, you, you know, basically, guys, you, you're not going to play bumper cars because if the cab of the truck and the corner of that fifth wheel start pushing, 
I don't care who wins, you're gonna lose. As I mentioned previously, it has automatic leveling. You can see the cargo rack on the back. That's got about a 200 pound capacity. Great for coolers or bicycles or especially bikes, man. You got a bunkhouse like this, a lot of bodies in it. It's nice to give them something to do to burn off all the marshmallow Mountain Dew energy. And notice the location of the dual air conditioners from the factory. One all the way in the front, one all the way in the back. That is going to keep this thing nice and cool in the hot summertime. So if I've missed anything, you have any questions or comments or anything like that, leave us a couple little remarks down there in the comment section. I'll do my best to fill you in. Um, if you like what you see here, you appreciate the effort we go through and, and the way that we shoot you straight even when we see a defect, hit that subscribe button, like the video, and give us a call here at Halid RV when you're ready. We are family owned and operated, been here since 1989, and we shoot you straight. Even you know when it's not always perfect, we always try to be fair. So if that sounds good, give us a call. We'll get you camping. Take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping, everyone.